Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Erin Elliott and I'm a K-5 elementary music teacher in Northern Indiana. And I'm also the teacher author behind From Dairy Me To You. This video is all about instruments. How do we organize and maintain and store our instruments as well as how do we use them in the classroom? I don't know about you, but I love in the fall going to the music teacher Facebook groups and looking at the pictures that teachers post of their classrooms. We have such different teaching environments. Some of us are in former band rooms with lots of space and storage areas, while other of us are in smaller classrooms with less storage. That's me. And I'm always amazed at those teachers that make absolute magic happen teaching on carts. So whether you have a full instrumentarium or just a few rhythm sticks and broken instruments, let's learn some strategies to manage our classroom instruments. All right, time for a story. My first year teaching elementary music, my principal gave me $1,000 of leftover fundraiser money to update the instruments in the music room. I got all new hand drums, all new rhythm sticks, some a few other instruments, as well as a new rug. It was fantastic. I wish my budget was that every year, right? It was all fine and dandy until my secretary, oh, I miss the secretary so much. She walked in with sheets of barcode label stickers. And she told me that every instrument needed a sticker label on it. Every rhythm stick needed a sticker on it. Do you know how long those stickers would have lasted on the rhythm sticks? Yeah, about 2.5 seconds, right? It took a while to convince her that that was not really efficient and not helpful. And she finally agreed to let me put those sheets of labels in the bottom of the bin so the labels were still there but not attached to the instrument and as a consolation prize i made her a spreadsheet that i was able to share on google on google drive with her of all the instruments the school owned i have since moved to a different building from then and i have a much more extensive spreadsheet that i use now i am able to track not only just my instruments and their condition and their brand, but I also can keep track of any equipment that I have, um, as well as books. And I can also keep track of my wish list on the spreadsheet as well. I can also share that spreadsheet with my secretary and my principal so that they know what is in the building as well. The barcodes are absolutely important, but they're not always the best for our equipment and how we use it day to day. So if you need a way to organize your instruments, if you need to be able to share with your administrator what is in your classroom, you can check down the link down below and get your own spreadsheet. It's exactly what I use in my classroom as well. Okay, so once you have all of your instruments accounted for on your spreadsheet, now you have to think about how you want to organize those instruments. This is the hard part because everyone's room is so different. Some of us have storage rooms, some of us have cabinets, some of us have open shelving, some of us have no storage at all and the teachers have to bring in their own. So there is not one best practice or one one size fits all approach here. But what I will say is think about the flow of your room. Where do your students sit and where is that in conjunction to your storage areas? Do they have easy access to the instruments? And do you want them to have easy access to, their, to those instruments? Some teachers prefer to have open shelving so students can easily grab what they need. Other teachers may not want that because of students who may get into instruments that they don't want them to get into. In my situation, most of my instruments are in a cabinet, so I keep everything hidden away. But I do know that when I am going to use instruments, let's say that I'm going to use rhythm six and jingle bells in a lesson, I will actually pull those bins out ahead of time and either set them on the back counter or up front so they don't have to go into the cabinets. I do have open shelving in my room as well, but most of that is empty during the year and that's where I put my xylophones in the summer when I need to get them off of the floor. Again, everyone's room is going to be different, but think of the flow and how much access you want students to have to those instruments. 
No matter how you store your instruments, I think it's really important to use instrument labels on the bins or baskets or on the cabinets themselves so you know where the instruments are supposed to go. Instrument labels help the students learn the names of the instruments, but if they are tasked with the responsibility of putting instruments away, it helps ensure that they will get put back in the right spot. There is nothing worse than running to the back of the room to grab an instrument in the middle of a lesson, only to find that it's not there because a fifth grader wasn't careful and put it away somewhere else. So I use instrument labels like this that have the name and the picture where I can find a picture. And I have done this different ways. I have done them color coded by the type of instrument, how they're played. So I've done my strikes one color, my shakes another color, my scrapes another color, and my drum is a separate color. And I've also done it by the material, my woods, metals, membranes, things like that. So you can color code these however you need to. And then I either attach them to the bin itself with hot glue or um, Velcro dots. Or you can actually, if they're an instrument that doesn't go in a bin, you can put it on the shelf itself and it hangs kind of down like this. Um, that helps my students know exactly where things are supposed to go. And it helps keep me organized because I am not naturally the most organized person. So if you need instrument labels for your own classroom, you can check down below to see what I use. Now that your instruments are organized, let's talk about how we use the instruments in the classroom. First and foremost, if you are a new teacher, you need to come up with routines and procedures for your students and then be consistent with them. This includes how students get instruments out, what do they do with those instruments when they wait to play, how will they know when to play and when not to play, and then how they put those instruments away. Again, everyone's situation is different, but for me, I like to plan ahead. If I know I have a lesson that's going to use specific instruments, I will get those instruments out of the cabinet first and then either set them on the back counter or up in front so I have easy access. Especially for my younger students, I don't want them or need them going into my closet or my cabinet and getting distracted by everything that is in there. Um, for my older students, especially if they're working on a small group project where they can choose different instruments, they know that they cannot just go and grab instruments willy-nilly out of my cabinet. They need to grab one instrument at a time and have a purpose for that instrument. And oftentimes, if they are doing small group projects, I will stand in the back and kind of be a guard over the cabinet and say, okay, what instrument do you need? What are you looking, what kind of instrument are you looking for? And just to help monitor that. When I have students play instruments, especially in a full group setting, they know that when they get their instrument, their instrument goes in what I call sleep position. And I'll talk about that more later. But that is a routine that is consistent in my room that they are pretty good about following. When it comes to putting instruments away, uh, depending on the, the grade level and the time that I have, I've done it both ways where they come bring their instrument up and put it away in the bin or go to the back and it, to put it away in the cabinet. And if that's the case, I try to manage that. They hand it to me and I put it away. Um, or I walk around and I collect them. One of my favorites, I'll grab my rhythm sticks really quick, is for my kindergartners and first graders, if we're playing rhythm sticks, I'll say, show me unicorn. And then I come around and I steal all their magic. Trying to make it fun and quick makes it a lot easier on the students. Once you have instruments out, students need to know when they can play and when they can't play. For me, I use three words that work for every instrument with one slight modification for recorders. Sleep, rest, and ready. For sleep position, the instrument is out of our hands, it's on the floor, and our hands are in our lap. The instruments are asleep, not making any sound. For rest position, I have the instruments in my hand, but again, they're resting, they're not making any sound. And then ready position, my instrument is up, ready to play, just waiting for the teacher's cue. For xylophones, I will do the same thing. Our mallets are in sleep position, resting on top of the xylophone. Rest, they are on our shoulders, and then ready, we're ready to play. I think it's also really important to model that with our students as well. So if I want my students to have their recorder in sleep position, 
my recorder is in sleep position as well. If I want my students to be ready to play, my sticks are ready to play as well. I think when, especially for our younger students, we want to teach them and practice that routine as well, especially because this is something that I use K through fifth grade. So for my younger students, I will have them practice the different positions. So let's say we hand out rhythm six for the first time. Okay, the rhythm six go into sleep position. Then I will actually, before we play instruments, they mirror me. And maybe we work on gross motor skills, maybe fine motor skills. And then when I have their attention, I'll say, show me a rest position. Ready, rest, ready, bunny ears, ready, rest, Pinocchio. And it makes it really fun and lighthearted while practicing it at the same time. Now, we are working with tiny and not so tiny humans. There will be mistakes. Plan A will not always work right. We want our students to follow the rules and play appropriately and take care of their instruments. But sometimes that doesn't happen. I have had instruments break before and it stinks. Most of the time it's an accident. But there still needs to be a plan in place for when students play out of turn or when they're not taking care of their instruments. So think ahead of time what you want those routines or procedures to be. Do they get a warning? Do they get two warnings? And after those warnings and it's still happening, what happens? I tend to take instruments away. I'll just walk over. I'll collect it. I'll say, you know what? I'm going to set this in timeout or I'm going to take care of these instruments until you are ready to do so. My ultimate goal is to give that instrument back unless they are truly being unsafe or unkind with those instruments. But sometimes just having me hold on to it for a couple of minutes while I explain directions and they can show me that they are ready, I am more than willing to give the instruments back to them. So there you have it. That is a lot to think about how we organize and manage our inventory and how we get kids to play instruments. What do you do in your classroom that you have found to be really helpful? Are there areas of classroom management that you struggle with? I would love to hear more down below. Leave a comment and happy musicking everyone.